Okay, thank you very much. I hope, uh, I think everybody can hear me. I got a microphone here. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is try to provide a, uh, uh, a long term perspective on decadal and even centennial time scale climate variability from uh, long, uh, in this case, tree ring records. Now, just to preface, and I'll go through this quickly, uh, you know, we all know this from the AR4 figure. Um, you know, the fact that there seems to be a clear divergence between the uh, modeled uh, greenhouse gas forcing effect on climate and what the background natural variability indicates. But uh, as we all know, uh, there's, there's a lot of decadal to centennial variability in what I call, I'll be calling DCV uh, in the paleoclimate climate data that may not be accounted for uh, adequately by the models, by the climate models. And one can easily see that in the, uh, uh, this is again from AR4, but I don't think change, things have changed significantly since then. Um, you know, the, the amount of uh, uh, uncertainty and amount of decadal variability there is quite, uh, quite evident. And uh, it appears to be uh, uh, significantly different from uh, um, what, the mo what the climate models seem to be able to uh, uh, produce uh, based on uh, our understanding of 20th century climate variability and forcing. Uh, and the, uh, over the past uh, millennium, uh, for a long time, solar and volcanic forcing uh, was uh, gone to to explain a lot of the natural variability at decadal time scales. And you can see here uh, an example of, uh, of, a, of, of a model forcing um, uh, by, by both uh, volcan volcanic uh, effects and also uh, uh, solar radiative uh, forcing effects. And they seem to be able to reproduce to some degree uh, the, the, time, the time scales of variability that we see in the, in the actual proxy records of past climate variability. Uh, but there's, uh, there's an alternative explanation for all this, too, that uh, uh, has been proposed. And it's kind of an Occam's razor approach, which says that basically um, the, a lot of the uh, uh, decadal timescale variability is really just an expression of, of kind of a red noise uh, type or, or low order armor model type forcing uh, of the kind that uh, Hasselman argued for back in the 1970s in his stochastic climate models papers. And uh, uh, Carl Wunsch uh, has argued that, in fact, this for practical purposes is all you need to, uh, uh, to understand the, uh, the origin of uh, observed climate variability in the climate record at the decadal uh, time scale. And uh, from a paper of his, there is a, uh, you know, a, a, uh, just a simple synthetic time series, effectively a random walk that he shows has this long time scale variability. No question about that. And the question is, is this sufficient uh, to, uh, to explain what we see in the, uh, in the observed data uh, and also in the long paleo records? And um, I'm, I'm kind of call, calling this uh, argument of Wunsch's uh, the, the null hypothesis that basically everything is just all the dexen variability, DCV variability is being driven by uh, uh, largely by uh, uh, red noise or lower order armor models. Uh, of type persistent feedback uh, models, and, uh, and, that, and this is enough. But what about the alternative, uh, alternate hypotheses? And um, to, to get into this, I'm, I'm showing, first of all, an interesting uh, figure from a paper published in 1976 by Murray Mitchell, a research climatologist with NOAA for many years. And um, back then, all that was thought about was that, uh, you know, Dec, you know, decadal and, time, and centennial time scale variability was largely driven by the solar, lunar, and, and uh, volcanic forcing, and so on like that. And notice that there's no mention at all of climate modes, and so NAO, AMO, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, but since that time, that perception has changed considerably. And now there's another spectrum, uh, as as uh, found on a, uh, a NOAA. Uh, website, and we have the climate mode shown here, and now we don't see any solar or volcanic forcing indicated there as an important contributor to uh, decadal time scale variability. Um, I suspect my personal opinion is that uh, 
uh, that there still is. Uh, we, 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 well, we pretty much know that there's volcanic forcing going on uh, at, at times of major volcanic eruptions. Uh, the, and uh, the solar forcing side is still pretty controversial, I think, but I'm, I'm convinced that there's some element of that there, too, in the, in the natural climate record. But there's been quite a change in, the, uh, in what we think about uh, the causes of natural climate variability away from solar forcing in particular. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's been replaced now by these kind of natural internal modes uh, that uh, are indicated here. And the time scales you can see are of the kind that we have to consider here for this, for this meeting. Um, some years ago, uh, uh, Mike Bann and Jeff Park published an interesting uh, paper. This is actually in, in the reviews of geophysics, uh, uh, advances in geophysics paper, big monograph, and uh, in which they use uh, uh, MTM SVD methods for looking for phase coherent uh, band limited uh, signals in, uh, in climate data, in temperature data series in particular. And um, what they found was uh, that, uh, uh, that they could identify, in, in a geographically clustered sense, signals that were consistent with perhaps the AMO, the PDO, solar, and, and ENSO. And this is all based on instrumental data back to the uh, back to the 1890s. But I thought that was interesting because it shows that first of all, um, the instrumental record does in fact seem to have these statistically significant uh, uh, band limited signals. Um, and, and that they're also, uh, very important, they, they tend to be clustered geographically to certain regions of, uh, of, of importance. Um, and, uh, but the North Atlantic sector, as you can see, is, is very prominently um, uh, shown here, as much because there's probably much more data in that area, too. So just some comments now. I think there's little doubt that there's some form of band-limited DCV uh, in instrumental climate records uh, shown by lots of different analyses. And the source of this oscillatory variability, well, it's not always clear, but ENSO, NAO, PDO, AMO, et cetera, uh, is highly likely, and maybe solar too, but that's much more uh, unclear as to how much uh, variability could be due to uh, solar. And there's, there's pretty much no doubt that these, uh, these records at least past temperature, uh, instrumental temperature, uh, show some effect of volcanic forcing over time. The question now is there an apparent or is there apparent oscillatory variability just uh, uh, is it just a short term expression of stochastic as in red noise or low order armor variability uh, that's mostly a, a chance phenomenon showing up in the 20th century and I call this the, the null hypothesis something akin to what uh, Carl Wunsch was arguing for. Um, versus um, uh, the question is, is there an ap apparent oscillatory variability indicative of long-term band-limited forcing um, uh, from in, in, uh, uh, in the system that we might be able to tell from uh, longer records of climate from tree rings in particular. Uh, the instrumental records are very difficult to, uh, uh, to, to use to, to identify robustly the presence uh, of um, even PDO timescale variability, which is on the order of 20 or 40 years. And for AMO, AMO variability, we basically only have like one, maybe one and a half realizations of that uh, timescale variability in the instrumental records. So we don't really have much of a chance to, uh, to test the existence of something like the AMO very robustly at all in the, uh, in the instrumental records. Um, so this puts us in an uncomfortable situation described by Wright in uh, 1971 as two rules of climate change, and uh, published in Weather. Uh, and the first rule is some feature of the atmosphere can always be found to oscillate in accordance with your hypotheses. And shortly thereafter its discovery, the oscillation will disappear. And I thought this was a brilliant uh, uh, a description of the conundrum we're facing is that the instrumental record really isn't sufficient to tell us how um, uh, important these kind of oscillations, oscillatory modes uh, have been over time because the records are too short. So to investigate the longer term existence of oscillatory DCV climate modes, 
Um, we need longer records, and I'm going to be going into that now. We're going to, and we'll be looking at uh, triggering reconstructions of climate modes, ENSO, PDO, NAO, AMO. Uh, the null hypothesis, as before, is that the band-limited variability exists in the observations by chance due to internal stochastic forcing and should not be expected to have persisted over time. If it disappears in, these, in, these, in this power spectrum, wavelet spectrum of these long reconstructions, we might suppose that this is a correct, that, this, that the null hypothesis uh, can be accepted. Uh, the alternate is the observed band limit variability persists back in time in the reconstruction in ways that suggest some form of intrinsic or extrinsic quasi-periodic forcing that is not easily explained by simple stochastic forcing. And uh, this would be, um, this would, if we found this to be the case, this would tend to support the, uh, this al alternate hypothesis. Uh, I'm going to be going through um, uh, some examples now. Uh, six different reconstructions of climate modes produced by tree rings. Uh, an ENSO reconstruction, two PDO reconstructions, an NAO reconstruction, an AMO reconstruction, and then one for the northern annular mode, the NOM. Okay. And there are many more of these out there, and I don't claim that this is an exhaustive uh, 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 set of tests, but, um, but there, so the list is just illustrative. Methods of analysis, uh, I'll use multi-taper spectral analysis and wavelength methods to describe the band limited properties of the data. And um, the, the significance tests of the spectral peaks will be uh, based on uh, a, a simple red noise null continuum model. Uh, the superior leakage and the consistency of NPM is, a, is the reason why I'm using this method. And the wave of the spectrum, uh, Torrance and Compo, uh, uh, will reveal the degree to which the, uh, the band limited variability indicated perhaps in the uh, MTM spectrum uh, carries back over time in a fairly consistent way. Here's a reconstruction of um, the uh, uh, DJF Nino 3.4 SSTs, reconstructing tree rings, goes back to 1300. Um, uh, and um, the, um, the spectrum of the instrumental data is right here, and here's the, uh, the MTM spectrum, and here's the wavelet spectrum of the same series. And then the same the MTM spectrum and wavelet spectrum for the full reconstruction. And uh, you can see that, uh, you know, the, this reconstruction is weakly interdecadal, but there's very little evidence for any sort of longer term uh, multi decadal variability. This is not necessarily meaning that it isn't there, but the reconstruction just doesn't show it uh, in this particular case. Uh, here, with the, with the uh, I mean, not the reconstruction, but the instrumental data aren't long enough to really show it. The wavelet power spectrum for the reconstruction, however, does show some uh, fairly consistent presence of decadal time scale variability, not, not in a very consistent sense in terms of always being significant back in time, but it comes and goes uh, intermittently. The, uh, uh, here's a PDO reconstruction uh, back at, uh, over 1,000 years. Uh, and um, in this particular case, uh, we do see in the instrumental data strong evidence for uh, multi-decadal variability, and that's to be expected. That was really an understood property of the uh, PDO. And you can see the, spe the MTM spectrum here showing that too. Centered around 40 years, the main peak. Uh, the reconstruction shows very consistent long time scale variability um, at the, uh, the multi decadal to centennial time scale. And, um, you know, I, I freely admit that a lot of this power right here is in the cone of influence, which means it's less reliably estimated in the, in the wavelength spectrum, but it's still there nonetheless. And there's still evidence even in the uh, 60 year time scale, roughly speaking, for uh, this kind of vari variability to be present. The, um, another uh, uh, PDO uh, index reconstruction, uh, back to 1500 in this case, using different data, I should say, uh, shows more or less the same kinds of features as the, um, uh, as the previous example, with uh, clear evidence for, for multi decadal variability. In the, uh, in the wavelength spectrum of the instrumental data, and the same also for, um, uh, uh, for the reconstruction in the, uh, uh, in the wavelength spectrum of the reconstruction. So there seems to be some uh, reasonably consistent presence of this time scale variability in, in, bo in both re uh, PDO reconstructions. 
uh, December through March, NAO reconstruction back to 1400. And um, this is a case of, uh, of uh, a, a, a uh, since this is an atmospheric index, one might expect that there wouldn't be a lot of, uh, uh, you know, long time scale variability in either the instrumental or the uh, reconstruction. In this particular case, we do see some evidence from audited decadal and the, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, power spectrum and the wavelet spectrum of the uh, uh, instrumental data. Uh, a lot less, um, whoops, sorry, multi decadal variability indicated in the, uh, uh, in the reconstruction uh, than we had seen in the other uh, uh, climate mode reconstructions. And again, this might be a refle reflection of the fact that this is an atmospheric index reconstructed not one that's directly tied to uh, um, oceanic influences in a, in a really strong sense. Three, okay, yep. Okay, finally, I'll go through this pretty quickly. Uh, this is the AMO thing, and, the, and once again, we see strong evidence for multi decadal to centennial time scale variability. And I'm gonna skip uh, um, over a couple more of these and go very quickly because um, we're running out of time. Uh, just torn and trash temperature reconstruction back 1,500 years, once again. Very strong evidence for uh, 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 multi decadal to centennial time scale variability. Same uh, thing for a uh, Gulf of Alaska summer. Uh, uh, summer uh, uh, temperature reconstruction from tree rings going back over a thousand years. And uh, so I think um, what this is all pointing to is that uh, the spectral analyses do show evidence for, um, for some clear presence of, of band limited decadal to centennial time scale variability that um, uh, would seem to. Uh, 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 eliminate uh, rights two rules of climate change as being true. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the oscillations appear to come and go in, in time in what you might call an amplitude modulated sense, but they never seem to completely go away. The, uh, per, per, the preferred uh, DCV band is difficult to uh, define, but it, but it certainly occurs in the, in the 30 to 100 year band, which is suggestive of a, a PDO and AOMO type forcing. Uh, that, Variability at centennial time scales is present, but it's less robustly estimated because the series aren't long enough to really do a very good job of that. Um, so the power spectra indicate that there's probably a mixture of both uh, band limited forcing and some sort of red noise, uh, uh, you know, kind of simple red noise forcing or even low order armor forcing um, to, that, that can explain what we're seeing. And um, let me just see now. Real quickly now, I'll just go through one final thing, showing the way that we might have a way forward and try to get a better idea about uh, 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 this kind of time scale variability through the evaluation of drought atlases that I've been working on over the years. If we, if we look at the, the average reconstruction of drought from tree rings in these, in these boxes here, and just smooth them with 30 year low pass filters, we note that there's a lot of interesting anti-phasing that goes on on 30-year timescales that is suggestive of some large-scale organizing principle that's driving hydroclimatic variability in, in preferred ways uh, over, the, uh, over these northern hemisphere land areas. And an example of this can be shown right here in this reconstruction of, of uh, drought uh, in these three areas in the uh, Pueblo and Great Drought period, 1276-1297. Dry here, wet here, which almost certainly means that La Nina-like condition uh, was uh, in, in, uh, uh, ongoing at the time. And then interestingly enough, this pattern of a dry, wet, which suggests kind of a negative NAO state. So I think the, um, uh, the development of drought atlases will help us, will lead us to a, uh, an improved understanding of the causes of, uh, of a large time scale, I mean, large, uh, 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 you know, regional patterns of, of, of decadal and centennial time scale variability. 
in ways that will hopefully uh, lead to improvements in our uh, ability to both uh, model and predict that, that kind of variability in the future. And with that, I'm finished. Okay.